Hey everyone, I'm gonna make this quick because I've been trying to make this like 10 different times and I am fried after like studying for a midterm for tomorrow and it's 11.45 p.m. So I'm gonna make this quick. I'm Charlie, nice to meet you. I've been studying under Dr. Spera as an undergrad researcher for quite a few months now and I'm gonna show you how I did uh, kind of like identifying the land use under the collect earth online points that you're gonna be working with. <clears throat> so this looks like a lot to begin with, but you're going to get into the mood, uh, into the swing of things, and it's going to get a lot easier. Um, and you're just going to do stuff like clockwork, one point after the other. I'm going to introduce you first to the bottom right. This is my um, Excel spreadsheet of a bunch of stuff, but most notably, um, I have concatenated coordinates for each point that I'm using. And then over here to the right, where you see all of this like color-coded stuff, that is all um, what Matt Biomis predicts the land use is for each point. So I'm going to start with point 72. Um, whatever point you're going to work on, you just like navigate to it here. You navigate to it on Collect Earth Online. Like I just say, um, let's navigate to point 72, go to plot. And here we are. We were already here to begin with, so you know what I mean. Um, this looks like pretty pristine forest. You know, scroll out a little, scroll back in. But there is also development. It might seem like there may be some development. I'm not sure. Um, and if you're not sure, uh, you're usually not going to be sure about what the land use is by just looking at it. Um, it's, it's very rarely that I just kind of click it and then go on and, and skip all these other uh, like steps. So I'm going to teach you how to do those other steps. So let's say this looks like a forest, but I'm actually skeptical. Now, Matt Bioma says it's a forest all the way from 1985 until 2022, um, but let's actually check that. So I'm going to take this concatenated um, like longitude and latitude here. Um, so I'm just going to press Control C. I'm on Windows, so it might be different for you if you're on a Mac, like Command C. But I'm going to copy, and then I'm going to paste over to this EVI underscore lines thing that is in Dr. Spera's Google Earth Engine repository. Um, right at the top here, where you say where it is our var ROI equals ee dot geometry dot point, you just see like the coordinates here. That's pretty obvious. Those are coordinates. You paste your coordinates in, um, and then you press backspace once because it tries to add an extra like line of code. And then control enter is the alternative for the run button. And all of a sudden, I can see the EVI curve for every single like um, year from 2000 until 2024. And on that note, I broke it up into these kind of four sections so that I could look at it not like all squished 2000 to 2024 in this one little area, but so I could kind of spread it out here. Um, if you're working with another monitor like I was over the summer, um, this could be even more readable and everything, but for now, I look at EVI. Um, I, I don't remember entirely if it's like the reflectivity, but I know that it kind of, uh, it corresponds with crop health or like kind of what kind of uh, land use that you're looking at. So um, I, I think it is a measure of some sort of reflectivity in satellite imagery. Um, anyways, I will just throw out some values there and I might have a document or spreadsheet accompanying this video. So I will explain to you like what colors correspond to what land use or like what EVI numbers correspond to what. But anyways, we can see that this EVI is hovering around 5,000 or 6,000 pretty consistently. Um, obviously, there's like natural rise and falls, uh, rises and falls with the wet and dry seasons. But overall, it's pretty consistent and it is not very peaky. Like it's not, um, I, I think you'll see in other, uh, other points that I bring up here, what I mean, like it's not, it doesn't look like agriculture to me. It looks like a forest. Um, and that is true for all 24 or 25 of these years, 2000 to 2024. So if I wasn't sure by this, then I would come over here to another Google Earth Engine window. And here I pressed Landsat Viewer. I think it's Landsat Viewer underscore Prof Spera or something like that. All you have to do is load this up literally just press control enter like run it to begin with that's the only time you're going to be pressing run this is just to set the whole thing up um make sure 
when you got all this stuff and when you run it, go to the left side of the window here and drag this little slider. So now you can see you have a little map here where you can place a point. And let's say I click on a random area. All of a sudden, it's going to zoom into that area where I clicked and it's going to show you this kind of uh, false color satellite imagery over many years. Now, under in this map, I'm actually going to expand this window for a bit so it'll make it easier for you. Um, in this map, you can click options and you can change the like the days that you're seeing this information for each year, like your that satellite imagery. Um, you can also change it between NDVI and other measures of like reflectivity and stuff. And then under the RGB visualization where I'm doing false color, I do nurse were red, but you could also do like green or something. Um, and then finally, there's image chip width. So that's just looking at like, if, if I bring that down to one, <coughs> then my satellite imagery here is gonna be very pixelated because it's very zoomed in. If I bring this over to like six, I guess, then it is going to give me a very large satellite imagery um, image if it's going to actually generate. Sorry, this takes a little bit of time, but you can see now this looks very um, complicated and it looks like it's done over a large area. So I think I went with three to begin with um, as like a sweet spot between that. Um, and I don't think you need to worry about anything over here in the console or anything up here. So I actually slide things around. I use these little sliders to just kind of make things easier to read or whatever. Um, here, in this case, I'm just kind of looking at the color of the land um, around the point. If you see the white point, that's where my uh, little collect earth online dot is. Um, I'm actually, let me actually make this accurate because I just clicked on a random area. So if I want to make this accurate, I just take those coordinates from before and I actually place it up here into the Google Earth Engine like search engine. And here it gives me a place. Um, this actually needs to expand this again. My bad, my bad. Um, it gives you the place. Um, now, if I'm like starting all zoomed out, then I have to like really, really, really zoom in and then try like searching this. And then I get the area. Does this look similar? Yes, because you can see it, it corresponds over here between Collect Earth Online and the real thing. So I'm gonna just place my dot down here because that's basically where it seems to be. You kind of have to like uh, approximate it a little bit. And boom, you see all of the false color satellite imagery over here. Um, now, that like dark blue slash black stuff, that's water. Um, and all of this red stuff, or sorry, not red, orange. I am colorblind, by the way. Um, <laughs> disclaimer. There's like a mixture of green and orange. Usually, very deep orange is going to correspond to... Um, almost like reddish orange. It corresponds to cotton. And obviously it's, this looks like a very natural formation. The cotton fields are gonna be more like geometric shapes, obviously, because they're like agricultural fields. Um, in addition, very, very green stuff could be either forest or agroforestry. And you would confirm whether it's real forest or agroforestry by just kind of like zooming into the um, true color like regular satellite imagery because agroforestry is pretty easy to spot on there. Um, there's also corn and wheat um, and soy. The whole um, corn and soy stuff, it's like, I, I would say soy can be kind of like a light green color in this um, nurse were red visualization. Um, you'll see it. I'm going to choose another, I'm, I'm going to choose one of these that says like soy and stuff, and you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. This is actually interesting here. I came across sugarcane. So let's just do sugarcane, for example, because um, that is 
quite important and increasingly common in the Serato today. Um, you can see it looks, I mean, first of all, you can see all the different fields, the agricultural fields here. If you can see them changing color over time, I mean, that's another marker of like, you can see if there's been crop intensification, because look at this, very, very like dark red, that implies agroforestry. So sorry if I said dark green. I meant to say dark red in this specific false color imagery. If you change it to a different one, then it'll be a different visualization. Obviously, it'll be different colors, but this is the one I like. And it's just these kind of subtle differences. Um, you can also see terraces in the satellite imagery over time. Um, and I obviously, it gives you these little squares for each year, like the 1990s, the 2000s, because then you can see, oh, they started developing this land in like 2001 or 2000 into this whole entire like sugarcane farm that was eventually operable by 2002. So in that case, if this is uh, plot 118, I'll go navigate there. And you can see that I said the land cover did change between 2020 and 2023 because it started out as some sort of like single cropped ag with this little this green stuff that usually implies like soy and stuff in 2001 it changed um and it it changed from uh i don't know if i actually said oh yeah i said it changed from soy with this like green stuff over to sugar cane in 2002 2003 etc so you can see how i'm like Essentially, I'm, I'm also able to look at the EVI line, let's say, for the sugar cane. Um, and we're going to generate this real quick. And now you can see this corresponds, like this very short and tall curve uh, that goes near over 7,500 and near 10,000. That's soy. Um, but after that, the curve looks different. You can see this is a very, very long season from September until the next July. That's almost a year. That usually implies either like, like long seasons would be like cotton and agroforestry. Um, this is not cotton because I would say cotton has a curve that might be a little, um, it might be a little taller than this. And if not that, then um, it will be like, it, it will not be this long. I think it'll be more like six months. This being like over a year or almost a year, that is, almost, that is very indicative of sugarcane farming. We can see down here, it's more, now this is on like a, this what I'm showing you here is, is back in 2000 to 2006. It's a scale from zero to 10,000. If we go to the scale that's zero to 7,500, you can see more clearly like these seasons last very long. There might be other stuff planted at certain times. As you can see, this EVI curve isn't actually that long, um, but it's also not tall enough to be soy. So it's just these little things where um, we're checking different methods of like remote sensing in order to actually get to the bottom of what the heck corresponds to what. Now here on the regular satellite image, this looks like sugarcane to me or some sort of agroforestry, and that's what it is. Um, I want to go to a soy farm. Let's go to point 162. Okay, boom. This is irrigated. This is pivot irrigated soy. Um, but if you wouldn't, if you don't know that just from the like satellite imagery, which by the way, this is a cool little like water retention pond thing. I wonder what that is. Um, we're going to put that into our EVI lines, control enter, we're running the code, we see these curves, and whoa, they are planting multiple crops in the same year, and that's evident because you see multiple of these like very short blips that almost reach 10,000 on the EVI curve within the same year. This is 2018, September, until the next January. Then we have another one again from that January to the, to the April. Soy only lasts, like soy and um, I, maybe corn, I don't remember the other one. Um, it, it only lasts like three months, four months in the growing season. So that is why you see these kind of like short blips of very tall EVI curves 
multiple of them in the same in the same year. That's not possible in the dry season. Like if if they're doing this from April to August, what the hell kind of rain are they feeding the crops? They're not. This is clearly irrigated. So when I go to this plot and collect Earth Online, I can say that <coughs> uh, there is. I need to actually, sorry, I need to get to it. <laughs> um, here we go. Pivot irrigation. At some point in Mapiomus, it, it just continues saying it's soy, but it doesn't say anything about the pivot stuff. Mapiomus also has data on irrigation, like if it thinks that certain land use is irrigated or not. But, and I, I don't know if I have that in here. It's not in this document. It is in my master document, but I'm not looking at that right now. Overall, you can just see that pivot irrigation, I mean, it's not just soy. There's also other stuff in there. So it could be soy corn. It could be soy unknown. All you have to do is kind of drag this over. And like, if we make this longer and we run this again, you can kind of expand this EVI curve and deconstruct better kind of like what this corresponds to. Um, I recommend talking with your professor or Dr. Spera about it. Um, I'm probably going to send an accompanying document that deconstructs all of this stuff as well. It is very late. It is past midnight now, so I don't think I'm going to get to this today. But I hope I showed you. And I'm also just, just for the sake of being consistent, I will like place my point here in the... like. Um, the Landsat viewer, and now you can see like, okay, well this was like fields in the 80s and the 90s, and then all of a sudden in 2003, seems like they went and started planting cotton, except then in 2013, it seems like they finally came up with this circular pivot irrigation, and they've been planting stuff ever since. So it's really cool to look at all of this stuff and compare it and see you know what you think the um, actual land use is for each year. Um, I hope this was enough of a tutorial. I might make another video if Dr. Sparrow or someone has any questions. Thank you so much and goodbye, good night.